yes, you read it right. We are here today to talk about the last unicorn. That's right, the last unicorn. Hi, I'm Dave Watkins, Watkins Films, and I recently got a 4K UHD version of the film in question, The Last Unicorn. I got this off the Shout Factory site for some reason, and I'm, I'm not even sure why I bought it. Even after I bought it, I was like, why did I just do that? I think one thing that kind of drew my attention to it was I, lo I was looking at the voice cast, and I was very Im impressed by the actors in the voice cast. Um, you know, it has a cast like Mia Farrow, which I wasn't like right then. I wasn't like I'm getting it now, but um, you know, it's got like, Jeff Bridges and Christopher Lee was probably what kind of drew my attention to it. I was like, I would like to hear what Christopher Lee has to do in this film, but also has Alan Alan Arkin does a voice uh, and Angela Lansbury. So I was like, that's a pretty cool voice cast for this film. Um, I saw this movie, I think, a long time ago. I think they forced me to watch it in school at some point. Um, but I didn't pay much attention to it. So this was really the first time I truly watched it and paid attention to it. And um, at first, when I first put the movie in, there's an opening scene, which was fine. Um, it had the unicorn out in the unicorn woods. And apparently she thinks she is the last unicorn. And these woods that they're in are protected. So if the hunters come, they can't kill any of the animals. The, the unicorn being there protects all the animals. That's the first scene. The, after that, there has an opening um, sequence with the, the uh, credits, which you saw all the actors' names, which I, I approved of that. But it had the... Uh, a song they had made just for this movie, some kind of Last Unicorn song, which which wasn't bad. Then it went into the first scene after that, and then some of the characters started to sing to each other, and I was like, wow, we're in a lot of trouble now. I don't know if I can sit through this thing, if they're just going to keep singing. I, I don't mind a little bit singing, but when there's a lot of singing. But luckily, that was it. They, they sing some then, and then it wasn't until later on they did a little bit more singing, but it was never it was never over-the-top ridiculous. The Last Unicorn is a 1982 animated fantasy film. Now, I don't usually watch animated films. It's kind of rare for me. But when I do watch them, I kind of prefer them to be an older movie like this. Now, this movie was based on a, a fantasy novel written by Peter S. Beagle. Beagle like the dog Beagle, not the, not Beetle like the Beatles. But um, it, apparently the novel has won some awards and... It's even listed on some some top five list, uh, top ten list or whatever, or uh, top one hundred. I don't know what it is, but some some list it's listed pretty high on a fantasy science fiction type of stories. And the one thing I did notice about this that that I wasn't aware of is the story here is very well done, and it is it is take place in a fantasy realm that is kind of like a, a medieval type of place, kind of, kind of like a maybe kind of like Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones sort of things. You got you got medieval castles. You got some Robin Hood type of thing. So I, I, I did like all of that. Even even the unicorn is, is pretty cool in itself. Another draw to, to buying this, if you buy this directly off the Scream Factory site, you can also get this, this poster that you can hang on your wall of the last <laughs> unicorn. But you can get this poster here. But this is new artwork. Um, I prefer the original artwork here. Um, with the unicorn and the Red Bull. Um, it's kind of like the Red Bull energy drink. Maybe the Red Bull energy drink was named after the Red Bull here because it's, it's a pretty cool character actually in the movie. Um, if you, This has a reversible side. On the reverse of it, you, you do have this um, Red Bull. And I, I would have put it up there, but there's not another version of this. So a lot of times when you when you get these type of things, they have a reversible um, inner, inner slip. This is just going to be white on the back and none of that. And so there's two discs. There's a 4K UHD disc and a Blu-ray disc. So let's get into the plot a little bit. Now, there, what's very interesting about this film is the themes that it explores. Now, the first part, it is a hero's quest for the unicorn. It starts off, the unicorn has her forest. Now, Mia Farrow does the unicorn's voice, and she does a very good job of, of doing it. So it starts off in the unicorn's forest, but then she gets a little a little butterfly shows up and tells her she thinks she's the last unicorn, but the, the, he tells her that he knows where the other unicorns went, but the red bull had covered up their tracks. Um, so she sets out on a quest to find the other unicorns, or at least find out maybe what had happened to them. But in doing so, 
in leaving this forest, she leaves all the animals there unprotected. So she's taking a risk, not just for herself, she's putting herself in danger, but she's also risking the animal. So the question is, is it important that she goes? Is I mean, that's the thing at the beginning of any any quest is like, what are what are what's at stake here? And there's there's a, really a lot at stake when she leaves, and so she starts off on her journey, and then it has a kind of a hero's quest where she goes from, uh, you know, as she's going, she she starts to um, meet other people who want to help her, like a like a young wizard, and she finds he's he's in a carnival with this witch who's. Who's uh, voiced by Angela Lansbury? And a very, very cool character design for this witch. And the witch has all these animals in cages that she has. She's got some kind of witch spells. She makes people think that they're like crazy monsters. She does have a real monster as well called the harpy that she has imprisoned. And it's really, and it's got big tits. I mean, it's like you can. It looks, it's got like women's tits in, in this crazy looking, like bird looking face. But um, so it's in this cage. And that's the same thing about this. This isn't a Disney movie. This is not by Disney. I'm not even sure what company. It's, was it wasn't really. That's that's something that might be a little little deceiving about this. It might be rated G, but there's some stuff in this movie that's really like, whoa! I can't believe they just did that. But so, you know, so she ha has this encounter with the witch and the harpy. The, the witch imprisons her, and she makes other people. Um, has people come and see her. Eventually, they get away from all that, and the magician ends up going with her. I don't want to spoil everything, but it's a very cool sequence with that harpy. And then so they go on, and then they meet um, another woman who, who as a young girl, she really loved unicorns, and it's a very emotional type of sequence where she's I can't believe at this my age now. She's not old, but she's probably like 30s or 40s, but she's like, it's like I, I wanted to see a unicorn, and now when I look like this, I see a unicorn, but she joins them on their quest. All right, now I'm going to go into kind of the second half of the movie, which I like the plotting of this movie, because the first half is the quest, and the second half, she ends up at the castle. Um, so I'm going to, I am going to have to drop some spoilers, because I want to talk about the themes of the movie and in order to do so I'm gonna to have to drop spoilers so when she gets near the castle there's the Red Bull and the Red Bull comes after her and it's going probably going to kill her you know it, I don't know if it's gonna kill her or not but it seems like that might happen and by the way there are some characters that get killed in this movie they just straight up kill some people in this movie it happens so the, the you know the Red Bull is over and then the magician who is the apprentice, apprentice magician he um, puts a spell on her and it turns her into a human form. And so now she is a human form. She's got like long white hair and she's completely naked, but they get her covered up pretty quick. But so, but they, um, she doesn't want to stay human, but he says in order for her not to get killed by the Red Bull, she has to stay that way. She has to figure out what happened to the other unicorns. So then she goes to the castle and that's when we meet Christopher Lee's character, who is King Haggard. And so, and he also has a prince there, vo voiced by Jeff Bridges, a very handsome prince. And as you can tell by the name Haggard, he looks like a, a Haggard king. Um, so he is the type of king who he who won't, he's been trying to be happy, and he keeps getting things, more and more stuff. Like the prince himself, he said he wasn't really a prince. He actually found a kid, like a baby, and he and he. Um, made him the prince and so he said that made him happy for a while but then he eventually became unhappy by it and and he has a very it's like a never-ending pit of of depression that he's trying to just find things to make him happy and which that's going to come into play here in a few minutes um when we tell you the main theme of what happened to the unicorns um, but in the meantime uh, the last unicorn is in human form, and she, um, the prince starts. He gets a fascination with her. He becomes obsessed with her, and he falls in love with her. Because he has more of an infatuation. But and as as time goes by, they spend a lot of time in the castle, and they do some songs, which is unfortunate. But they do a montage, which was fine. It had a song montage, but then they actually sing it some other times. I was like, oh geez, here comes some more songs. But they didn't go on too too bad with them. But then what happens? Um, she eventually. The more she begins to become attracted to the prince, the more human she becomes, and she kind of forgets that she is still a unicorn. But then the king um, confronts her at one point when the prince isn't around, and it turns out he he's known she was a unicorn all along, and he knew that she was the last unicorn. And apparently he 
he has all the other unicorns and, and he's like you, you, you don't see them and all the unicorns are out in the ocean the red bull has kind of forced them into the ocean um he, he, and it goes into this flashback when he was a kid um younger he saw these unicorns and he just had to have them and so you know the unicorns are, are you know in their forest protecting the forest and, and for everybody to see and to enjoy but he was very greedy and he wanted them all for himself and that's why he, he summoned the red bull to force them into the ocean. So these these unicorns have been under water in the ocean for all this time just because this man had to have them for himself. And it didn't, he made him happy for a while, but it didn't, I mean, nothing was ever going to make, make this man happy. Now, let me tell you something about King Haggard here. Now, he may seem at first to be somewhat of a nice guy. He's, he seems to be a little generous where he helps the main characters out on their quest. He... He brings them into the castle and he gives them gives them positions, he gives them rooms, he gives them some jobs or whatnot. Now he does seem like a little generous, but the thing is, and you may feel a little sorry for him because he's clearly depressed and and he has and he cannot f- find a way to get happy. But this character, as it turns out, he is the the worst kind of asshole. He is a real dick, and you know you don't just take unicorns. And do that shit to unicorns. I mean, that's the, the, unicorns are for everybody. And you don't just hoard them all for yourself just so you can watch them on the bottom of the ocean. So this movie is a little deeper than you would expect. And it does ask some fairly profound questions. Like, do you begin the quest to begin with? Even though it puts your life and those are, that you love in danger. It, once you become so involved in the quest and you get to the end of it, what can, do you even do you even acknowledge or can you even see what the end is anymore? Can you can you remember what it was that you were going after from the, the beginning? Even though there it is, it's really close, but you're uh, blinded by other other things that you've gotten involved with during the quest. And in the end, once the quest is complete, can you go back home? Because at that point, you are a different person or maybe a different being at that moment. So this is a 4K release of The Last Unicorn. It, the 4K transfer was taken from the 35mm inner positive. I see a little, while watching it, you do see a little film grain here and there, which which doesn't look too bad. It's not too distracting. I think from this the 4K upgrade of this, I think it, uh, it probably adds, adds a little bit to it, even though there's not a lot of fine detail in this animation. But the character design is quite nice. And the voice cast here is, is very impressive. And it's all very well done. A lot better than, than I expected. Now, I almost forgot to rate the movie. Now, I think Scream... First, I'm going to rate the packaging. I would say Scream's, Scream's uh, packaging is maybe a 3.5. I don't... You want to give it too high. I mean, I think they did a good job with it. The movie itself, I'm going to rate it four stars. I think it's uh, four with the caveat that it is an animated movie, but for an animated movie for this time period, I'm going to give it four stars. Anyway, if you have seen the movie, let me know what you think about it. I'm Dave Watkins, and if you haven't done so already, if you'd like this video and subscribe.